This is the Trade Raiders Podcast. Welcome. I'm familiar, yes. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. This is a comic book club. Comic book club. Comic book club. Comic book club, yeah. We read a different trade paperback every single week. I'm Daniel. You're Nathan. We're brothers. We read comics. You're goddamn right we do. We sure do. Nathan, I... Uh, I just wanted to, you know, before we get into the podcast, I want to do like some things for TikTok content wise. Lovely. So, uh, you know, you love when I just throw things at you. Yeah. You know, so People what I'm going to do. People call me racist. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to get back into that. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> love that. So I'm going to describe a comic book, one that you will know, but I'm going to describe it very poorly, p- poorer than I normally do. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty hard. But and, and you have to. <laughs> did you come up with me. these poorly written yes, summarizations? I sure okay. did. All right, fuck. I saw I saw some TikTok account where they uh, describe like, movies poorly. Yeah, and, and I love re- those. And it's really fucking funny. Or it's like space wizard, you know, throws. His, yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, a weatherman with exclusive tools tries to find a racist exterminator. The weatherman. No, that'd be too easy. Oh, dang it. Okay, wait. So say it again because I only listened to the weatherman part. A weatherman with exclusive tools tries to find a racist exterminator. Thor? Yes, it is. Okay. Thor, <laughs> the God Butcher. Okay. That's Very the, easy. You should say that to the end. <laughs> that would have uh, been a good, big, good segue. Into the news? Into, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, coworkers have a disagreement on new ordinance being enforced at work. Avengers? Close. Justice League. Coworkers have a disagreement uh-huh. on new ordinance being enforced at work. So like Civil War? Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A tenant confronts his landlord for jacking up rent. Hawkeye. Yeah, you got it. Yep, that's a good one. Yeah, see, you're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, enough of that. Um, <laughs> good job. <laughs> See, that's three videos right there. Oh, great. So we have time codes in the description. We have news, the book, Back Matter Matters, in the poll list. Absolutely. And uh, those are always in the description, along with our link tree and stuff. You can find our shit. Nate, yeah, where we start out. with, though? We start with the news, Daniel. We sure do. So let's uh, let's pull up some news. What what news you got this week, Daniel? Um, so apparently, on Howard Stern's um, show, he said that he was so doing Doctor Doom. He was doing Doctor Doom. Yeah, he wasn't like fucking to, him. Uh, that's a, who knows with that <laughs> okay. guy. Okay, but it was something that he said when he wasn't supposed to be saying it. But he said he was doing Doctor Doom. Wow. Okay. And I guess he was talking to RDJ for some reason. What does that guy even look like? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern. He looks like he should be in a metal rock band from the 90s. Yeah, he looks like he was in like Black Sabbath or something. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. He's got a good facial structure, I guess. I don't I don't really know. If he talks like Howard Stern, then it would be like a nightmare. You okay. know what I mean? Then but I don't like, want that. Yeah. I don't, I don't really listen to him. Anyway. Um, Daniel. Dark Horse Comics is going to... Um, released an Avatar prequel called Avatar Adapt or Die. And it's a prequel comic focusing on Sigourney Weaver's character, Dr. Grace Augustine. I'm, I'm glad that they clarified because I wouldn't know who Dr. Grace Augustine was. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to tell her adventures on Pandora before the first Avatar film. Mm, this before is, the last Airbender. Yes. Okay. The last Avatar. Gotcha. I don't remember any doctors in in those do you remember Gordy weaver but, that i kind of briefly do i guess was she the no because wait she was a doctor yeah something like that she helped or something i don't know yeah and i think this is to generate hype over the new movie and james cameron's <laughs> like it's gonna be real long and people are gonna be upset with me yeah and let's give you more content <laughs> yeah which is uh which is weird but that's cool though i i figured they'd be like avatar books already or something but i, I guess there not. might be um but this one's gonna be with the creative team of karina bechko who worked on, I want to say, Green Lantern Earth 1 with uh, Gabriel Hardman. Okay. And the other people I don't really recognize. But yeah, so that's happening. Cool, cool. Nathan, the fifth Reckless book by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips 
be called Follow Me Down coming out in October. So by Reckless Book, is it just like the just the one off graphic novels that they do? Mm-hmm. So like My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies and like and like those kinds of books or Yeah, like the just the graphic novels that come out in okay. the hardcovers and whatnot. Do they I don't consider know. that in like one universe, I guess? Or why do they call it why do they name it that? It's kind of, so I listened to a uh, podcast with him on it, and I guess when he brought back criminal people just reordered like their last numbers when criminal used to come out, you know? And so that, and so they got like shit, uh, sales at first. And so they like did like a rebranding kind of thing and just made it separate from criminal. Okay. So that it just kind of made it more exciting, I guess. And people, and it just kind of blew up way more when they started doing that. So now they're just kind of stuck. I I guess doing reckless reckless. And I think my heroes is like reckless. But you know, the, you know those ones that they've been doing. I guess yeah, this is the just, fifth one. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I love those. But yeah, Pulp He's, obviously won an Eisner last year. Two years ago, last, I think it was last, last year. Last year, okay. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, great book. Love yeah, it. I love those, dude. I, so I'm good. glad that they found an audience and can just keep doing what they want to do. Yeah, because it's great. And I don't know how, because like the Ghost in You, I haven't read that one. But that came out in April, and now they have like another one coming out in october so two that, in a year is insane i guess that makes sense because what are they normally like 100 80 100 pages or something like that aren't they like 200 because I... no i don't think so i don't think pulp was that long uh anyway daniel spider-man a new monthly series chronicles the final chapter in the spider-verse saga so there's gonna be another main spider-man book coming out just called spider-man i think that john romita jr one is amazing amazing spider-man maybe but this yeah. one's just gonna be spider-man it's going to feature the return of Dan Slott, who wrote several hundred issues of The Amazing Spider-Man and uh, penned the original Spider-Verse in 2014. And uh, Mark Bagley is going to join him on this. And I guess Sick. it's going to be like a... It's going to be the, it's going to be the finale of Spider-Verse stuff, I guess. Of like they did his a, Spider-Verse stuff? Yeah, because they did a second one. It was like Edge of Spider-Verse. And then there was the original Spider-Verse. So I guess there's going to be a third one. And Daniel, everybody wanted it. Morbius is going to be a part of it. Let's fucking go. By Mark Bagley. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. It's Morbin time, Daniel. It's Morbin time. <laughs> finally. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. When's that come out? Do we know? Uh, nope. Eventually. Eventually. Cool. I probably won't pick it up, but I thought that was interesting. Daniel, comics are dying. Again? Yeah, again. Just kidding. Comic sales are up in the year of 2021. Uh, Comic book and graphic novel sales rose 62% to two two point zero seven five billion, up 70% versus 2019. I take responsibility for like 50% of that. Yeah, I know. We, we, and then like not reading any of we it. Were, we read 52 different trades last year. So yeah, dude, we were part of that, I think. <laughs> how, ma- how many billions is that just between us two? Uh, a good amount. Yeah, pretty much. I think that was us. We, so. should, be, we should be comfortable. You're yeah. welcome, comics. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, do you know that there's like a... The Baymax Disney Plus show is like out. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I saw it and I was like, oh, interesting. I think eventually we should read like the Big Hero 6 like manga that came out. I guess. Uh, Sounds published is- by Marvel, right? Yeah. Okay. But, it, but it's a is it manga backwards? and I don't know. I feel like it would be. Joe Quesada is on it, I think. What? He did like the artwork. No way. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Is it black and white? I don't know. David, I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel know, like I don't I know a know lot about Joe Casada. That was kind of cool. I also saw at the store is that there was um, a book called Deadpool Samurai, and that's like the manga format, but it's like a Deadpool story. Hmm. And it sounds sick. I could see that. Yeah. But anyway, I think that'd be fun to get to eventually. That would be kind of fun. Nathan, we got a Paper Girls full trailer. I saw something on Twitter, and I think it was a trailer. I don't know if it was a full trailer. If if it happens like the last couple of days, then yeah, that was didn't probably seem it. as colorful as the comic book. No, which I'm a little bummed about. It's kind of like a Watchmen thing. I want know? it to be completely neon and burn my eyes as I watch <laughs> it because <laughs> that's how the comic was. I want it to be all magenta and hot pink. I know Matt shit. Wilson doesn't do movies, but just get him. Yeah, you know? he'll figure it out. He'll go frame by frame. He'll just get like lights like this that are just like pink and yellow. Yeah, he'll and paint shit. them. He'll color the lights, <laughs> and then it'll make the show exactly. those neon colors. Right, right. But yeah, that comes out really soon, doesn't it? The end of July 29th. Holy shit. 
So hopefully that'll be cool. I don't know anything about it. It's so good. Like you'd love it. I, I think I read the first <laughs> issue. That's not like, nearly enough. And I was like, this is all right. <laughs> it's like 27 <laughs> issues, I think. I know it's like Brian K. Vaughn and like, it was um, uh, Michael, Cho- not Michael Cho. No, no, no. Cliff Chang. Cliff Chang. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Matt Wilson, he's great. Of course. It's a it's a res- recipe for really good things. It sure is. But yeah, I haven't read it all. Now, speaking of uh, good artists collaborating with each other. Okay. You know how there's like that Batman thing from Tom King and Miss Jared's? Batman One Bad Day. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, there's going to be a uh, series of series is coming out one after the other. There's going to be eight different ones for each of the different villains. The first one coming out in August is the Riddler one by Tom King, Mitch Jarrods. But there's eight other ones in, that will focus on Two Face, Penguin, Mister Freeze, Catwoman, Bane, Clayface, and Ra's Al Ghul. And right. The cool ones. The, the cool creative teams, Tom Taylor and Ivan Reese on Ra's al Ghul. Right, we knew. Very cool. Oh, we did know that? Yeah. Okay. G. Willow Wilson and Jamie McKelvey on Catwoman. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Uh, Jamie McKelvey? Jamie McKelvey. Oh, shit. Isn't that cool? From uh, Wicked and Divine. Yeah. Oh, that'll be really good. That one will be really cool, I think. God damn it. John Ridley, Giuseppe Kemen Coley, who we know from Darth Vader. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be on the Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which seems a little strange. Hopefully there's cooler things in there for him to draw. Mariko Tamaki, Javier Fernandez on Two-Face. Nice. So these, the, there's a bunch of them, but they all come out like one month after the other. So unfortunately, Tom Taylor and Ivan Reese, uh, theirs on Raw's doesn't come out until March. So those are all one shots? Or you said a series, series of the series? I, I figure they're series is because... Or maybe they're... No, I think they're... Graphic novels, because isn't that the Tom King and Mitch Jared's one? It's like a graphic novel. I have no fucking clue. I think so. I, I don't think it's like That'd a maxi. Cool, though. I don't think it's a maxi series, but yeah. So I don't know what one bad day is. I assume like there's a thing that happened to Batman. Maybe he's dead. I don't know. And then it's like here's what the villains are doing. So, but they got some fucking. They must believe in it because they got some banger artists on there. And then other creative teams that are good together: Ryan North and Erica Henderson, the team behind the Unbeatable Squirrel, Squirrel Girl. Girl yeah. Yep. They are uh, on a new creator-owned series called Danger and Other Unknown Risks. And it's an adventure story with laps and adventure and a world on the brink of disaster, which comes out in April. Sounds fun. April? Yeah. Nathan, that's hardly news. I know. It's, it's very far away. I don't know why he chose to announce this now, but that's like a year from now, it feels yeah. like. <laughs> but I like that. It's like a team. time capsule. We should do Squirrel Girl because it, it's like actually a lot of fun. Uh, I saw that at Zia and I'm like, should it, I buy this? It's <laughs> one of the most funnest stories. I Have you like. read it? Yeah, I oh. read the first trade. Okay. And yeah, it's, well, it's fun. She beats up Galactus. <laughs> hell yeah. And that's canon. Rightfully so. Nathan, apparently the Dink, Peter Dinklage, and Jeff Goldblum's characters in the Marvel Universe were supposed to be in Thor 4, but they were cut. They were cut from f- f- Thor? F- Thor, yeah. Oh, no. I would have liked to see the Dink again. Yeah. I was surprised to even see him in like as a big man Infinity War, you know. Yeah, no, but, I w- like what's he up to? He's got his fucked up hands, you know. Yeah, he's got to just deal with that. Mm-hmm. Just walk around being giant. I'm excited for that movie, man. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> Nathan, uh, rumors. Uh huh. Apparently, what if season two to drop on July 20th, like Beyonce style? Potentially. Really. Yeah, I don't That'd know. Be weird. I, don't, I don't know if it's Beyonce style. I heard this like last week. Like this July 20th. Yeah, like couple, two weeks from like two recording. Weeks. Yeah, exactly. No. Uh, just a rumor. Yeah, I don't. They definitely market things. Yeah. But. For sure. I don't know. If you see season get, two uh, next time you go on Disney Plus, you're going to watch that shit, you know? Would it get in the way of anything coming out right now? I don't think so, right? <sighs> no, not, not, not like That's Marvel so wise. That's so strange. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's the case, but okay. Or if at it least, is, at least soon, you know. If they hot drop it, that'd be kind of cool, I guess. But that'd be pretty thug. I gotta finish the first season. <laughs> you didn't? Oh yeah, you did it. I didn't watch like the last two or something. Oh my god, you nerd. Ah, uh, it's just all right. Yeah, last bit of news that I had: Stranger Things creators working on a live action Death Note series. Oh, I heard that. So again, yeah, for Netflix. For Netflix, I guess they're like we're trying again. <laughs> yeah, though that was like. A movie, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, so it'll be a TV show. Right, right. That's probably for the better. Uh, Nathan, mm-hmm, last mm-hmm. thing I just wanted to bring up. The Rolling Stone 
came out with a list of the top 50 superhero movies. And I just wanted to uh, talk to you about it. Are there 50? There's more than 50. Because I mean, I guess there is, Guardians yeah. 2 wasn't even on this list. Hmm. So, but... What does the Rolling Stone even know? Stick to music. I, that, Stay in your lane. Exactly. I just wanted to go over some of the things. They probably I, put Watchmen as number one. Watchmen wasn't even on there. So, oh. I think. I, I, I just, I just want to... It's I in want, my top 50, for sure. <laughs> it's like top five for me. Nathan, I'm going to run some of these things by you and just ask your opinion okay do you think ghost rider is better than the snyder cut which one the first ghost rider it's pretty good better than the snyder cut if i were if you were to tell me you need to watch one of these two movies right now <laughs> i would watch ghost rider okay, okay because i haven't seen it in forever i guess so i don't really remember how good it is but nick cage has abs and that's worth something <laughs> you know <laughs> all right well you agree with rolling stone then okay do you think the old guard is better than Scott Pilgrim versus the world. No. Well, they think so. <laughs> She's got a cool axe, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you see it like Does twice. Scott Pilgrim have a cool axe? I don't know. He's, got a, cool, so. he's, he's got, got a cool Rick and Bacher bass. Those Rick things are badass. Yeah. No, Scott Pilgrim's definitely better. Do you think that Captain America, the first Avenger, is better than the Avengers? No. Neither do I. Uh, do you think Ant-Man... The first Ant Man movie is better than the Batman. <laughs> Did they seriously? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ant Man was thirty five. Batman was thirty seven. Ant Man <clears throat> is fun. It's a good time. I just like not, a, dude. That's that's insane to me. Batman just feels like there's a lot more cinematography. uniqueness. Yeah, like film, I guess, in there. Yeah. Because Ant Man's like Ant Man's like kind of cookie cutter, I guess. But yeah. there. It is fun because there's like a heist, and that's cool. Yeah, heists are cool. Yeah, but there's heists in Batman. Do you think that Guardians of the Galaxy 1 is better than Infinity War? <laughs> um, prob- Probably. I, I personally think so, but yeah. I just wanted to get your take on that. Because like Infinity War is great, but there's a lot of context there for sure. Yeah. And Guardians is definitely a smaller group of people, so... I could see why someone would put that, yeah. So, Spider-Man Homecoming or X-Men Days of Future Past? X-Men Days of Future Past is my favorite X-Men movie. Yeah, same. Spider-Man Homecoming <laughs> is not my favorite Spider-Man movie. So, yeah, I think that's that's appropriately rated. Well, they agree. They disagree with you. What? Yeah, they think Homecoming is better. What? 12 and 13. So uh, Not a lot of people like a lot of the X-Men movies. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you think that The Incredibles... Uh-huh. Is better than the first Iron Man movie? I don't know. They're, they're very different. No. <laughs> it's very hard to rate these movies. I, I, guess. I know, I know. Because they're you, very different. <laughs> Fuck, what do you, Nathan. What Probably, do you think the 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 number one movie on this list was? Iron Man three. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Second guess. Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Wow, that'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. Final. Final answer, Catwoman. Dude, I need a serious answer from you. What okay. do you think the number one the number superhero one movie is? superhero movie? Uh, the Dark Knight. No. Okay, what is it? Black Panther. That's pretty good. It's a good movie. It kind of falls apart in the third act, I think. But but yeah, number one. You know what I mean? I did have a lot. That was like actually. That's actually the only movie I've seen like dead ass by myself. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just went alone and I didn't like it. I didn't like going alone. <laughs> I liked the movie. Oh, you! Second but I time, went alone. Second time you go alone is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I didn't get the chance to do. So okay, just a couple more. So rank these three. Okay, Avengers Endgame, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, The Dark Knight. Um, Into the Spider Verse, I put it number one. Okay, The Dark Knight and Endgame. Probably Endgame last, and then Dark Knight number two. Okay. So they thought Endgame number four, Spider-Verse number six, Dark Knight number seven. So. Like kind of the opposite. Okay. Of what you just said. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly the opposite. So, just okay. that, so what do you think? Last one is the better movie. Spider-Man 2, with the Sam Raimi movie, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or Logan? Ooh. Again, they're very different. 
very uh, different, but just like, what do you think is just like a better movie? Ah, dude. I think Spider-Man 2 is probably the better movie, but I like Logan more. But I, I think okay. Rolling Stone put Spider-Man 2 above Logan. They did. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think Logan is like incredible. So I, I, I yeah, I think much, it's great. Like Spider-Man 2, I don't even think about when I think about these. What's like, number 50? 50? What was 50? It was the uh, Snyder Cut. Oh, okay. That's pretty appropriate, I would say. They also <laughs> threw in the 1960s Batman in the middle. Sweet. They had the Rocketeer. Okay. Yeah, that counts. In there in like the 40s. They had Tank Girl. Okay. Oh, th- there's a movie? It was a Tank Girl movie, yeah. Oh, I think okay. it was made in the 90s. But it was just Were like... the Hellboys in there and like all that the stuff? The first Hellboy was in there, yeah. It, it was like properly rated. It was in like the 20s, I think. Okay, sure. But yeah, I just like was reading this. I'm like... Damn, what a task. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like going back and forth. I'm like, I do not agree with a lot of these. Yeah. Someone at Rolling Stone was like, I'm going to cause some chaos today. <laughs> I'm going to drop a <laughs> nuke on Twitter right That's now. That's insane. No Watchmen. Get yeah. out of here. <laughs> None mean, of the Watchmen. I think that would make people really mad if it made the list because people like really don't like that movie. It's all right, right? I, I mean, it. it should be. Yeah, because like, like, it was just like how... It's both Snyder I Cut. I think it's just a squid thing. You know what I mean? People just are unhappy about... Squids are weird, though. Like, explosions yeah. are cool. That's easy. Yeah, I, I think it's completely logical how it was handled. Yeah. Anyway, Nathan, let's get into the book this week. Yeah, let's do that. Daniel, we read Thor, God of Thunder by Jason Aaron, Isad Ribic. That's pretty much it for the artists, except for the colorists. <laughs> uh, Dean White and I've Vorsina and Joseph Bino lettering. Nailed it. What I didn't realize until like right at the end is that there's like no inker for Esad Ribic and good. That makes sense. Because <laughs> like, what do you add to Have this you, man? Just just coloring in like, yeah, the blacks like, that he put. I don't know if you ever noticed, but like there's some panels where like the black, you could tell there's like pencil, like, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it was done pencil with like coloring. Sharpie. Yeah. And it, I'm like, that's kind of an interesting way to shade. <clears throat> But I was like, did the inker do that? And then I went and looked, and I'm like, oh, there's no inker for Asad Rebic. Yeah, so. you look at the pencils in the back of the back in the back, and matter, I'm like, these are pages, and they're absolutely insane. Like, there's no value that any inker could add to that. This guy, Asad no. Rebic, is like a uh, Alex Ross that's like still working in comics. It feels like like this guy, yeah, God tier. He's got some incredible stuff, and all of it's so fucking fun to read. And so this is like one of my favorite. It's like one of the best comics of all time for me. This, yeah, no. this Thor got a thunder run. Um, I didn't give a fuck about Thor before this. Oh yeah, and I just like saw that. I think I started reading like a couple years after Jane Foster Thor came out. Okay, um, and then I like read this, the start of Jason Aaron's run, and so I picked up this hardcover. There's another hardcover after this, and then there's a Jane Foster hardcover, and that's when I like, that's what I binged to like catch up, and it's so right. fucking good. So, yeah, no, it's amazing. It's like right up there with Green Lantern by Jeff Johns for me, for sure. Just because like the evolution of the character and how creative they get, it's uh, it, it's awesome. And it feels like outside of the typical Marvel universe, kind of. Yeah, pretty separate. It, it feels like an epic of its <clears throat> own, and it's like it's like comics is the Odyssey. It feels like you know. Right. So this is uh, it's just like it's just one of the examples why long form comics work so well sometimes. Yeah, and I think that I think Jason Aaron is like. He's he's accustomed to that, you know. Yeah, because before this, he had like scalped, which went for like a really long time, and like a bunch of other series. So, yeah, um, it makes sense. But I have the hardcover. Um, I assume you just picked up or went on Comicsology because it's on there. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, yeah. So I got the Thick Boy, which is pretty cool. But yeah, yeah this is this, this is, is like, book. I I don't read <sighs> Thor. This is like the only Thor I've read. I'm pretty sure. Okay. And I just like can't imagine just going to a different run. It is, yeah, it is hard to read this first because you can't <laughs> do any other. Like, like, this has got to be, like, the definitive run on, like, Thor, I think so. Right? Well, like, Matt Fraction did some Thor, which okay. was apparently pretty good. Okay. I mean, there's the classics, like, Walter Simonson. Mm-hmm. You know what? Actually, what I found out is that Walter Simonson's Thor, there's, like, a cover that he did, and a random beer company took 
that made it black and white and put it onto like a logo yeah or use it as like, like a logo it's like viking beer yeah or viking beer or something it's just walter simonson's thor and it looks really cool yeah i saw him tweet about it and <laughs> no. i was like this is, this is an outrage that guy is just so jolly looking <laughs> <laughs> i love that guy so yeah walter simonson obviously and then donny cates is on it right now and does make a very fun thor but i'm sure it's fun i feel like this is definitely like definitive like if you wanted to read a good run of thor this is what i would recommend because absolutely i think i could like recommend this to anybody that like is like wanted to read, aware of the movies you know or or even just like if someone like wanted to read like i just want like a fantasy comic book or something oh sure or i know that they liked like game of thrones or some shit like that i would mm. like give them this because this is cool yeah definitely so i wasn't like 100 percent in love with the pacing i was like 90 percent in love with the pacing like what do you mean I couldn't help but like look forward in the panels and just look at the what's happening in the artwork and then go back to read the captions, you know, because yeah, the okay. captions really slowed down like the the sequence of like reading, you know what I mean? Because okay. there was like little blocks of like paragraphs and things like that. And so it kind of slowed me down. And when you realize that the captions have not that much to do with the pictures, you can just look at the pictures and then read it. OK, one, you're stupid. And two, <laughs> here's why you're wrong. Because <laughs> I feel like Jason re- Jason Aaron really wanted to like, he has like some of the most colorful writing, I feel like. Okay. And what I mean by that is that he's just like talking about things that are going on in Thor's life or like that things that he's like experienced that really adds context to what's going on in here. Sure. And while I do agree, like Assad's work, like I could read this book without any words for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's like still pretty fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think just having like the extra context and hearing Thor's voice, which is like the Norse God sort of, sort of voice. He's like so good at it. I don't, I don't even want to, he must like walk around his house talking like Thor because he's like nailed this voice. I feel like, yeah, I don't think he's like too weird with it to where you're like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. It's like not, I think it's just like it's the still, font that they use. It makes it seem more like, uh, uh like Thor. Shakespeare or some shit. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, it's awesome. And I disagree with you on that. I, I guess there is like a lot of captions, but he, he, it's very creative. Yeah. Yeah. It, like I get it and it works and I like it. Yeah. Uh, but th- I'm like definitely more stoked for the movie after rereading this. Mm-hmm. So, so how far have you gotten in this run? You read God bomb, right? I think so. So I got like a little past that. Okay. I don't remember what was happening. Malekith? Malekith is in it. Was there Malekith you know, stuff? I, th- I think I might remember Malekith and be like, "Oh, that's what he looks like in the books." Yeah. So this is not super far though. We're reading God, but Thor, God of Thunder. The trade's called the God Butcher. Right. The one after this is called God Bomb, which kind of rounds out this this hardcover. It tells like a fuller gore story, and then after that, there's like a Malekith section of it, and then Thor becomes like unworthy, and then that becomes Jane Foster, and then it kind of just goes on from there. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. A little bit down the road, one of like probably like my favorite Marvel comic is Unworthy Thor because it's like as fun as this, but there's crazy shit going on. Okay, and so it's like it's pretty awesome. So like the whole run, I think the Malakut stuff might have been like a little bit of a low, but he keeps your interest like the whole goddamn time because it's so good. Right. So Nathan, I um I woke up in the middle of the night last night and I wrote down a joke. Oh great! <laughs> for this, this has got to be good. So. <laughs> Gore, the the character that Christian Bale is playing in the movie, and mm-hmm. also the main character in this, he's called Gore the God Butcher, and and I wrote down, "How is he the God Butcher if he didn't kill our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ?" God Butcher, how is he the gap if he didn't butcher God? You know, if he didn't, how is he the God Butcher if he didn't like butcher actual God? Yeah, yeah, like Christian God. Yeah. Imagine if we just see Christian God in this. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, oh, I was just about to. I saw Ribic. I would trust to draw that. <laughs> I would, yeah. I would trust him to draw Gore slicing God in half with a Necroblade. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Cause like every planet or something has like their own set of gods, I guess. Or like every species. Yeah. They do things like that. So if I, I guess if they went into like Midgard or whatever. Like Christian God would be there. Yeah. I think, I think all the Earth ones hang out in like Olympus is what they do okay yeah yeah that makes sense so that's pretty fun but yeah he he creates a lot of fun context about gods in this which is cool but let's get into it daniel all righty so there's a past thor i like to call him bro thor because he's like kind of like a frat bro 
kind of. Yeah, he's partying. But we see like Thor in like three different stages in his life throughout this trade. So there's like a past, a present, and a future. And uh, past Thor celebrates in Iceland after killing like a frost giant and saving the Icelandic people. And he celebrates by drinking all of their mead and sleeping with all the women. Mm-hmm. So he's just like... He'll stay for like a couple of days. Yeah, he'll just like party. But uh, one day the vibe was killed when the head of a god floats through the local river and Thor's never seen anything like it. And so... Um, you get like one of the best Thor panels ever. Yeah, so this is probably <laughs> the most famous... Seven. <laughs> the most famous panel... Are you talking about where he's just looking down? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that panel, but it just stands out to me. Oh, I, I like pause and like... I, I like laugh. It like really it's is. done super. Re- it's done super well. It's just something incredible. about it is just very slightly off. You know, like maybe it's just like a little bit too wide of eyes. Yeah, maybe it's like, just like a little bit of overexpression. I don't know what it is, but it is my favorite panel in this entire run. <laughs> maybe if like the eyes were closed like a little bit more, and then his mouth was slightly open. You like yeah, or maybe like less frowny because he's like here, <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do a, th- a Thor face for the camera. <laughs> There you go. That's good. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I thought that that panel is interesting. Uh, yeah, just like the way he draws people with, like, shocked faces. It's super fun. Yeah. And uh, I think they do it, an amazing job establishing the frat Thor because he's just, like, he just loves fighting and he loves partying. So he's just, like, he's just living his life, you know? Yeah, this was Thor, like, a thousand years ago or something. Yeah, just about. And then it jumps to, like, present Thor. And mm-hmm. He's got the hat on. That's how I differentiate yeah, it. Yeah, they do a really good job of that too. Because like past Thor, he doesn't have Mjolnir. He's not worthy yet, which is very interesting. Yeah. And then present Thor has the sweet hat. Mm-hmm. And then future Thor, he's got an eye patch and he's got a mechanical arm. And you're like, what is that about? And he's got the Odin sword. He, yeah, he's got the Odin sword, which is sick. Which is fucking sick. Yeah. And he, he's got long white hair, and it's it's cool. Yeah. So present Thor answers a prayer of rain on a pl- on the planet called Indigar which is experiencing like a massive drought. And so after he like brings rain to this planet, he stays with the natives and he discovers that their gods have been absent like this whole time. And when Thor searches for them in their cloud city, he finds that these gods were murdered, which he identifies as the work of Gore, the God butcher. What's, what I thought was really interesting in this scene is that Mjolnir has like a nightlight mode. Yeah, I've never seen that, <laughs> but it's like it's that's so fun. I don't know what it is. He's just like, let yeah, me let me like, charge up Mjolnir it, real it's quick. It's got like a bunch of energy in it, I guess. And yeah. so why can't it just glow a little bit? I know, which is like that's a, that's a fun feature. You know, I've never seen that, but it's pretty cool. And I think that like this part does a great job establishing like the 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 just the general population of gods in the Marvel universe because he's like, where are your gods? Like your gods should have handled this. Yeah, but it's also people can just pray to gods and that's how they like get messages to them, which mm-hmm. is like, which makes sense. But yeah. it's funny that like someone from a whole ass other planet can just pray to Thor and you'd be like, Oh fuck, I'll just go handle that real quick. Uh, oh, someone, someone's trying to page me right now. Yeah. And then like Jason kind of creates context by saying things like there's more gods than there are like stars in the sky and stuff like that. So the sheer number uh, is, is pretty cool. And yeah. I, I love like the ruins of like the cloud city and like the build up to Thor finding like the gods that were butchered in there. Like that, that, um, splash page where he sees them like hanging from the ceiling is so fucking good, dude. Yeah. Cause you're like, Oh fuck. It's cool that they're not just all like human size, you know? Yeah. Like these guys are like huge. They, they're know? like frost giant size almost. Yeah. Which is cool. And so just like the different designs and stuff like that. And, and they're all like hairless and like, gray or like blue or something like that yeah but yeah for the most part they're all like people looking yeah so i guess it'd be kind of cool to i mean some of them aren't i guess like humanoid yeah because there's that one in like the thor uh trailer where it's like that big dog looking one with spikes like that that's a god so Mm -hmm. i guess i guess not all of them but um some of jason's colorful dialogue that i just loved reading um was he he writes this he says with such a myriad of pantheon spread across the cosmos i never dreamed of such a thing possible and it's just like all of that like all the time Mm. and i'm like this is sick (laughs) it just feels like thor is talking to you do you notice asad rubik's like signature no so the one where they're hanging yeah i'm on that the lower left corner does it on is it on there does it say ar yeah it's like red (laughs) no asad rubik's name starts with an e Oh, it does? So AR 
What does that mean? We discovered this early on, but remember Avengers versus X Men? They had like an augmented reality type uh, thing. This is when Marvel was doing that. You had to have like an augmented reality app that you could download on your phone and pages with the AR on there. You could take your phone out, scan the page, and it like does something. I like literally didn't even believe you when you told me his name was spelled with an E. I'm like, is that his signature? It's mm. so weird. <laughs> he just like has a full ass like graphic a fucking, design logo. Yeah, it's like a fucking stamp. Yeah. Like. <laughs> He's like, this is me. Yeah. That's I did funny. this. Bah. <laughs> no, yeah. So that was like a weird time and they don't do it anymore because that's weird. I mean, this would be a cool one to read like that, you I, know? But like, I don't think, I don't, I don't really know what it did. I think it like. Why didn't it let me read it like that? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't think they were Comic doing Sology much. used to let you do that, I think. Maybe it was the Marvel app. It was the Marvel app that would let you do it. I don't uh, know if they still. It would be kind of interesting to go into the Marvel app and try. But yeah, that was when they were doing. They were trying something new, and I don't think enough people did it to make it worth it. Gotcha. I was, I was about to say, I'm like, the yeah, sad Rubik. But, but like the <laughs> AR is dispersed through like a bunch of comics this time. So you, But you'd need that app in order to use it. So okay. if you don't, it just kind of takes you out of so it. So he bit. didn't sign anything. He didn't sign Very anything. Very humble of him. Yeah. Uh, then we get future Thor. And this one's like thousands of years in the future. And he is all father. But he's the all father of an empty Asgard. And Thor's like old and beaten up. But he's still, he's still fighting like Gore's uh black berserkers as they're called but they're like these little dogs yeah there's like these like black dogs that like fight him and so he's like still fighting like some of gore's things which is interesting and uh i i think like future thor is an interesting approach because like you'd think you wouldn't want to know how things end yeah but i think jason and the readers know like how comics work like even if thor dies he'll like come back or whatever yeah so instead he like kind of plants these seeds to create anticipation for like what's to come but it also deceives us for certain parts like that come throughout the run so like if you were just reading this first issue you would have no idea that thor becomes unworthy for like a big chunk of this run yeah or like you see his uh his arm and it's mechanical and you're like oh shit how does that happen and Mm -hmm. stuff like that so it does it deceives you and it creates anticipation at the same time which i think is really cool yeah and like there's no telling if like his run would even make it to that point you yeah know what I mean? true he didn't he didn't know either he's just like i'm just gonna do this and hope for the best you know? see it hopefully people like it yeah um but yeah that was issue one it's just comics at their prime like great introduction we don't see gore yet but we we hear his name so we know that he's like pretty important what i thought it was interesting is that when thor's like finding all these bodies of these different gods he like kind of recognizes them from like stories and stuff he's like oh fuck we went to like dinner one time like oh dude we fought in this thing yeah (laughs) i got into a bar fight with that guy oh Oh, man man. he didn't deserve this (laughs) hope the wife's okay yeah (laughs) yeah he does which i think is kind of cool and then there's some where he's like i don't i don't even fucking know Mm -hmm. Uh, but issue two we dive into past thor and it's like his first altercation with gore in this issue but uh we see Thor's like unworthy and he tries to lift Mjolnir and he's like really trying his fucking hardest. Like this, this like third panel where he's like really putting both hands into it and like his whole ass body and it's just not budging cause he's not worthy yet. Um, and so he's a little pissed about that, but he goes on trips with his Icelandic boys and he's just like trying to squash beef with other gods. <laughs> That's, yeah. Which is, he's just like trying to find gods to fight. And, uh, so when he gets to a fight place, uh, there's like the bloody steed or the, the bloody like flying horse of one of the gods show up. And so Thor's like, I'm going to go investigate this. So he gets on the horse and then he finds like another beheaded God. And then he finds Gore for the first time. And, uh, so yeah, it, it's just funny to me how Thor is just like living his life and picking fights with just other people. He's like, I don't know. I just want to fight someone. There's a really funny caption here. And it's like, uh, the gods of the Slavs could have done this to themselves, I suppose. Fought each other, fought each other over Odin knows what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your first God knows what is just Odin. Yeah, yeah. I like those little those little substitutions. Like, ah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I really like this reveal of Gore because like as he's flying this like unicorn horse thing or whatever, he sees the other god he's supposed to fight, and his A head's Pegasus? already. 
Is it a Pegasus? I guess it is a Pegasus, yeah. <laughs> this unicorn horse thing? Yeah, this unicorn <laughs> with like... That flies? With wings, yeah, whatever that's called. Yeah, no, as he like gets on it, because he can't fly yet because he doesn't have Mjolnir, he like sees the other god he's supposed to fight, and he's like already beheaded. So it's like, oh, fuck. And then mm. later we see Gore for the first time, which is a cool reveal. Yeah, how do you feel about the G-string? You know, I don't... It's fine, I guess. I think it it makes him scary. <laughs> All that confidence, it's yeah, terrifying. That's got to be, yeah. It's you, not like he has like a bulge, you know. You, but like, how do you approach that? Because like, if you don't have anything there, it's just like, well, Gore doesn't have a dick. Yeah. So I guess there's it's a scary he thong. Di- he has different. It's just kind of like a, a symbiote looking thong thing, just kind of covering him up because mm-hmm. there's there's different black things like all around him different tendrils and then he's got his robe and shit Mm -hmm. um it ends up like later on yeah this is like related venom right yeah that ends up like his sword and like like, all the shit around him yeah it's like null sword that's cool but it was gore's at first i don't think so maybe maybe i'm wrong about that but because like but like later was like there before like the big bang you know what i mean so it's probably his sword yeah yeah, i think you're right but um because I think when he, when, um, fucking Donny Cates, Donny Cates started writing that, he like asked Jason, he asked Aaron, Jason Aaron. He's like, is this Gucci if I can do this? And he's like, yeah. If it, yeah. And sense. like, I guess it makes sense. And it looks like a it, they do symbiote look, sword. Thing. They're basically symbiotes. Yeah. So, which is dope. So, yeah, it's kind of fun how Jason is like, I guess it doesn't ruin anything, you know? So yeah. I mean, go for I, it. I had no plans to describe where this came from. Or yeah. if I did, yours is way better. You yeah, know? true. So I, I like how comics can work that way sometimes. Can you imagine trying to convince Jason Aaron to just like change a fundamental part of like his run kind of? Yeah, be like, hey, can I borrow this thing that you made up? That's a great idea. Yeah. And he's, he's like, like yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. He was apparently very supportive. But yeah, it, it's kind of cool knowing that now because I haven't reread it since I found that out. There's some panels where you can't really see the G-string. Yeah. Like 37... I don't know if you have page numbers. No, just show me. Uh, there's like this panel where like it doesn't even look like he has it on. Yeah, it maybe it's just like constantly moving. Like it's like a Rorschach mask. Like his uh, thong just changes shapes. Yeah, sometimes times. it's just his balls. Sometimes <laughs> it's just his dick. Sometimes you get some crack. I hope it's that way in Love and Thunder. Because <laughs> like, can you imagine if, if they did like the g-string thing or and and made Christian did this, Bale wear it and did this look like specifically like Christian Bale could like pull it off. Because, like, he, like, puts his body through, like, whatever it needs to to look however it needs to. Yeah. He just pulls, like, an American psycho and looks like this guy. Yeah, he could. Because, like, Gore's, like, shredded. Like, his legs are insane. I I just kept looking at his legs. Yeah. You know what I mean? The amount of rendering that goes into Thor is so fucking good. Yeah. Like, like, in the pencils themselves, it's, like, perfect. And I'm like, I would just read it like this if I could. Yeah. But, like, also, the fact that the colors... Don't fuck it up at all. Like it keeps like that shading and that rendering in there somehow, which I have no idea how that works. But they did a really great job coloring this. So book. does Assad color sometimes, or no, never? So does he work with this dude all the time? Because um, I feel like this is like it looks a lot like Eternals that I'm, he's working on now. I think Matt Wilson's on Eternals. I want to say. No way. I want to say really? that that's what it is. I'll look I, it up. But I could you, be wrong. You keep going. Yeah. So basically, at this first or the second issue is just. Thor and Gore go to war. Thor and Gore? Thor, yeah, it's like a Dr. Seuss book now. <laughs> Thor, Thor and Gore, Gore go, go to, to war. war. <laughs> and Thor got sad some more. And they'll be in Thor number four. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, basically the fight goes on for a while in the sky, and Thor gets pretty fucked up by the end, and Gore's like, were you the, the god of again? And Thor's like, thunder. And then a, a thunder strike, or I guess a lightning strike, because... I don't know. That's just how Thor works. But a lightning strike hits Gore and it catches him off guard and Thor falls to the ground and he's knocked out. And then present Thor like also beats up the black dog thing and he needs to get to the halls of the all knowing to figure out like how bad things really are. So basically this, the second issue is just his first altercation with Gore uh, in the past. And then present Thor is like, is he back? Like I need to figure out what's going on with all these dead gods because he's not sure yet. So, Mm -hmm. But that was a pretty good moment with that like lightning strike when he's got him pretty fucking beat up, and then like that lightning strike comes in. Like they do a really good job emphasizing big moments. Yeah, definitely. And, and it uh, definitely uh, keeps the whole thing. It is Matt Wilson. Holy shit! See? Oh man! I told you. 
That that puts like Matt Wilson on like God tier because this book like looks amazing. I always flip through them. Yeah, he he also colors um Thor for a large part of this run. Uh, uh, this run. Yeah, the oh, Jane wow. Foster part of it with uh, Russell Dowderman, and I think that's like one of the best duos. Like I love colors and stuff, but no one touches Matt Wilson for me. You know yeah, what I mean? for sure. Always just so kick ass. You know, I I thought Gord didn't have a nose, but he kind of does. It's like really close to his eyes. It's like a little his piggy nose, like up here. It's like a small piggy nose, or like yeah, maybe a, maybe an odd monkey or something. Yeah, something like that. And so I guess in the movie. They didn't do that because they didn't want him to be compared to like Voldemort, which I guess makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I saw that article like five times. I'm like, it doesn't matter. He doesn't know. Get over it. <laughs> yeah. This guy, if they do it right, will be much scarier. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, are, you but, done, are we done with two? Uh, one sec. I like how when he's just like talking to Thor as he fights him, we learn that he just kills like any and every god. And he's like, he kills like the gods of war, of like torture. He tortures the god of torture. Yeah. And he's like, I killed the fucking god of poems. I don't give a fuck. I'll <laughs> kill all the gods. <laughs> so I, I just like that aspect of him. Yeah. But yeah, issue three, Thor travels to, in, in the present, Thor travels to Omnipotence City. And it's like a city of the gods to like talk and hang out. And so he goes to the library and uh, he wants to like research these missing gods. And so he finds, with the help of the librarian there, uh, an entire hall of missing gods, which Thor uses to find just like a, a never-ending trail of butchered gods. The Hall of the Lost. Yeah, the Hall of the Lost. And uh, so he follows like the gods there, and he finds Gore's like black berserker dogs there. So he knows that it was like Gore that did all this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, we see the the sick god that the trailer uh, or the movie did like bar for bar. Which is really cool. Yeah. I think that's like the best design for a god. Like, I just want to see that thing live. Give me a miniseries to this guy. Yeah. I don't care what he does. Or just show me. Get a sod on it. Just get a sod to drop once. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably just looks like a spiky dog, you know? Yeah, he just like runs around. Yeah, but like the scale is like super cool here. Yeah. I hope he was properly compensated for he, them using it in the movie. Probably not. I, I don't know. The, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, apparently Gore has been like killing for like. 2000 years and just like no one's been noticing i guess yeah he's been putting in work i mean with all the gods that there are supposedly like it would take a while for somebody to notice sure and you know thor is like hunting them all down like all the ones that have been missing or whatever yeah or no one's heard from and then they just end up dead uh in the past after getting his ass beat in the last issue thor goes to gore's cave which is where he was like truly shown fear as he like recalls it like this is where he was like truly fucking scared for like one of the first times Mm -hmm. and in the present thor goes to the same cave that he remembers so vividly and he finds another god that's hiding in that cave from thor saying that gore's like reign of terror on these gods is because of thor and like what happened in that cave so it kind of leads up to the next issue but how do you pronounce his name shadrach shadrach He's a great character. Like he comes in like later in the run. Yeah, I remember him. He ends up becoming the librarian. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is pretty fun. Spoilers. But I, I love the emphasis on how badly like this memory fucks him up because it's like emphasized that he's lived for like thousands and thousands of years and like generations of like people on earth go in like the blink of an eye to him and all that stuff. He's got and, so many memories. And, and he stuff. remembers this cave so vividly right. because of he was like scarred there. Mm. We also see Iron Man in this, which is a bit weird. Uh, yeah, you know, because he's like Iron Man. Because like he didn't, because this was like a thousand years ago or whatever when he last visited this cave. And yeah. So he like needed help like figuring out where it was. Yeah. Um, and so. then like Thor tells Iron Man to go warn the gods on Olympus. Like, can you just like do this for me real quick? Can you like shoot them a text? You know, if you're like in the area. Yeah. Can you, <laughs> if you find yourself you near sw- Olympus, can you just swing by there? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be real helpful. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's and, pretty much issue three. Yeah, and then Shadrach was saying that, like the, the god killings were because because of Thor. Yeah, did you say that? Yeah, I did. Oh my bad. All good though. Um, so yeah, issue four, we find out what happened in this cave. But uh, first, we see some old man Thor, and after getting his ass beaten by the Black Berserkers in like a desperate attempt to die, um, Gore keeps him alive because he they wants just, him to like suffer. They just return him to the throne. Or yeah, whatever. they're like, we'll just put you back here. Don't leave again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Gore's like keeping him alive. So we know that. And, um, 
in the present, Thor meets Shadrach, who's the god that had his eyelids cut off by Thor so that he would be forced to watch Gore murder more gods. Mm-hmm. So he's very creative uh, for and how he kills gods, which I appreciate. He's not just like going most efficient. He's like taking some pleasure out of it. For yeah, sure. and then just a couple stabby stabs. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to get creative with you kind of deal. Yeah, he's like saving Thor for last. Yeah. Which I thought was fun. Like, that is fun. When He wants to know that like, yeah, I did everything. Yeah. yeah. I was very thorough. Like, cause in like old man Thor, he's like, um, he's in, what's it called? Asgard. Asgard and like, it's, it's just empty, like dead and beaten up. It's just like a, a testament of his failure kind of deal. I imagine like everything is dead, you know, like earth's probably like long gone, you know, it, it touches on that. Yeah. Later. Okay. Yeah. Which is cool. And so, so he's just like letting him suffer for as long as possible. Yeah. So Shadrach. Like, gives Thor a tip that Gore could be in Chronix. And Thor's like, I don't know what the fuck that is. So he goes back to the library to try and figure out what that is. And uh, the whole library is, like, on fire, basically. And is being burned by Gore's dogs. And so he's able to, like, figure out what Chronix is. And then past young Thor is in this cave with Gore. And he's um, getting tortured in that cave just for, like, Gore's entertainment. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, then he's also trying to like get information about like other Asgard gods and stuff. And stuff yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I really like <laughs> so Gore or Thor's in like these chains in this cave and he's got just insane back muscles like Assad draws just unreal back muscles like they don't look like traditional like comic art back muscles because those are very like anatomic like you could see each part but Thor gorgeous look Thor fuck. Their names are so similar, but Thor looks fucking huge. Yeah, man. I just imagine he just looks up like, like bodybuilders and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, what What does the back look like? Yeah. What is the fucking huge back? Yeah. His arms that he draws always like amaze me. I'm like, wow. That yeah. Looks sick. He's so good. And like the highlights on, on them too, with like these, the coloring is, is done really well. Mm-hmm. So Gord's on this planet Kronux and he's like sacrificing time gods to be able to travel time. And uh, basically, to end the issue, we see present Thor time travel his way to the time of future Thor. So we actually see those two meet. Um, but it's actually it's so sad seeing like old Thor just like beg for death because like yeah, he's, he's begging for death at that time and, shit and beating the shit. Yeah, so it's it's pretty brutal. And then last issue, issue five, Gore uses the Chronix thing to time travel back fourteen billion years ago and to like the dawn of creation and he kills an elder god and he takes his like liver or heart or something heart heart and when he returns to the present to make like another jump to the future present thor shows up and uh mm-hmm. we haven't really talked much about lettering but gore has like a very distinct like lettering style and in in this issue we see him like the we see his like dialogue boxes and i like how they're black and they have like the black tendrils coming out of it, it makes it seem real spooky but yeah, this is he. He goes back to like, I guess before time or something like in the void. I guess yeah, like the first like kind of mock up of gods made by like the elder gods or yeah. whatever. And like one of the gods was like crying and that like created things. I don't know. It, it's all very I abstract, no I guess. Boot. But yeah, um, and then he just like kills one and takes his heart. Like no big deal. Yeah, and I, I like I like how clear like Gore is on his goal. Like when when we're reading like his dialogue, he's like gods are everywhere and i was taught to like put my undying faith in these gods but where were they when i needed them kind of deal yeah which is a which is interesting it's like an interesting idea that he was just like failed by the gods one time so he just kind of dedicated his life to it yeah um but we find out thor's accidental contribution to gore's mission was in the past when he was getting tortured. He was being tortured for like 17 days. Mm-hmm. And then Thor's boys, the Icelandic ones, yeah. came in to try and save Thor. And Thor was able to like get out of the chains and he cuts off Gore's arm, which causes him to later get his like goopy arm, the symbiote one, I guess. Yeah, that's and, sick. Uh, w- and that helps him kill gods. So, Oh, no. <laughs> which, is not, which is not, you know, Thor thought he was helping. He was like, I'll cut off his arm. It'll be harder for him. Because he thought he killed him. But there's like a big boom and then he's gone. Kind of yeah. Thing. So I, I love this like quick head turning effect of like Gore when he like is looking behind him. We like see the path of like his pupils. 
Oh yeah, and you can just tell tell that his like head snaps like one way, which is super cool. Yeah, and basically the trade ends with Gore going to the future, which is where Future Thor is. Because like and Gore jumps back in the pool, yeah, for goes, some reason goes back in there, and Thor follows close behind Gore, but the future, uh, but he gets to the future nine hundred years after Gore does. Mm-hmm. So he thinks he's like right behind him, but he, Gore's had like nine hundred years. So present Thor meets the All Father, like future Thor, and they plan to fight Gore together. Meanwhile, Gore has like been building the ultimate weapon that's called the God Bomb, which leads into the second trade. So, yeah, it made it seem like when he was going towards like the elder gods and getting that heart and stuff that he like wanted to become like a god himself. I'm like, that's kind of hypocritical. Yeah. But like, it doesn't seem it's very like... the boys of him. Yeah, very the boys. <laughs> very Billy Butcher. But yeah, and then the, there's a thing saying that the next trade is the origin of Gore or next. So that might be the next issue. Yeah, it's issue the origin six. of Gore, mm-hmm. which I remember. Yeah. He like needed help and gods weren't there. And so he's like, this sucks. I'll just kill you. Yeah. So I so, think, I think there's something with like his mom or something like, yeah, it is. It's like with his parents or something. Yeah. yeah they failed him. So yeah. While th- this, like this hardcover that I have, I definitely recommend people getting it. Cause it features like the gore story more complete and it ends uh-huh. with like God bomb. Um, but this is like still a sweet way to end a trade, like having two different generations of the same man meet to go after like their longtime villain. Yeah. It's like, such a sick idea. Like present Thor was like, father. And he's like, you're so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, Fucking I'm you. Yeah. Which he does look like Odin because he's got the eye patch and all that. And yeah. He's like, oh my God, yeah. dad. <laughs> <laughs> Weapon your arm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the old man Thor is like one of the coolest things. It's so cool robot arm or whatever arm yeah seeing all that shit he's got happen. a sword and a hammer eye patch i know he's so double sick. fisting Are double fisting <laughs> it, it's so rewarding to see like how all that stuff happens too like how he loses his eyes how he loses his arm so it's pretty cool so uh, let's get into uh back matter matter nathan yep back matter matters back matter matters and this is some top tier back matter this is this is just what the doctor ordered. Nathan. Yeah, we got we got the sick variants. Uh, first off, well, I have the hardcover. I think it's mainly the same though. Probably. So it starts with variants, right? Yeah, like Joe Casada. Yep, Danny Mi- Mickey. That's such a fucking cool one. Wait, Danny Mickey. Oh yeah, I got that. Uh, Scotty Young, Naturally. of course, the goat. He's he he drew like a Loki as a cat. There's w- no Loki in here yet. He he must like have not have known what it was about. I don't think I, he does. I, I would love to have seen like a like a baby gore. <laughs> <laughs> with like a little baby g-string i think he actually said that like a lot of the times he doesn't know what the story is about yeah they hire him like so early on that like yeah they don't they don't even really know what's going on so. yeah like he pro- i think he gets hired for covers like before like teams or even like yeah i think dis- so <laughs> like hired They're like and can shit. make a baby one real quick <laughs> um there's a design variant by Assad which shows the three different uh thors which mm-hmm. is so cool because like Thor has Yarnborn, which is like the big axe. What is it called in Stormbreaker? Stormbreaker, yeah. Um, I think eventually, no, Stormbreaker is like the the isn't like Ray Bill one, right? In comics, yeah, typically, yeah. it's yeah. like a half hammer, half axe thing. Yeah, so sick. So <laughs> this one's just big X. Uh, Daniel Acuna got some great ones in there. I think he's actually on a couple of issues a bit later. That's a good Olivier Coipel. Oh yeah. Love that guy, of course. Then we get a sketchbook, Nathan. You get some of that. Oh my god, this is my favorite. I think this is probably like my favorite sketchbook I've seen, just because it's so defined and so perfect. Like it, it makes sense that he doesn't have an inker. Like just color over the shit there, because he like really he probably puts just everything. Like, turns up the saturation or something, and just makes all his pencils black. You yeah, know? and that would work. But it's so good. Like it's crazy to think that some of these are pencils because they look so fucking gnarly. Can you imagine just like? Like, like, does he erase that shit? Does he erase ever? Probably. Probably, but I can't tell. I don't see erase marks. Yeah. Um, But yeah, just like designing what present Thor looks like and future Thor and all that shit's really cool. I I like this uh, early design of All Father Thor because his arm's way too fucking long. (laughs) And you can tell (laughs) that he fixes it a little bit later Uh, and it's colored, which I think is pretty funny. 
Um, um, I think gore design's pretty cool. I think if his other arm was straightened out, oh yeah, it is super long. What yeah, <laughs> so he's like, uh, let me. Erase. I guess he does erase. <laughs> no, he just restarts and makes another masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, gore designs is pretty cool. I like his his gorissi. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. No, no g string here, Nathan. There's a gorissi. <laughs> I like his uh, head tentacle things. Yeah, man. See, I think they could have pulled off I think the no nose that. thing or do this, whatever this nose is. Have the tentacles be a very big, like, defining factor. Yeah. And just, like, fo- and actually have the symbiote shit on him, make it animated or whatever. Sure. And, you know, have the cool little, like, cut up hood. I'm sure what they did will be fine. Yeah, I know it will be. But I th- maybe. Uh- Maybe like Christian Bale just didn't want to have all that shit on him or something. That's but that's at least very Christian Bale's possible. like gray. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which I think is like enough. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Like we get it. I, I like this uh, design note that Assad puts, and he says thumbs on the other side of the hand to make him slightly more alien. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which it does. It works. He's got two thumbs on either side of the hand. It looks weird as fuck. Uh, we got cover sketches, which he does. And dude, these pencils. I, stupid i can't believe that some stupid. of these are pencils stupid it's it's really crazy especially it's like rude it really is it's like <laughs> it's just unfair like he's the kind of guy that makes other artists be like i quit like i can't do this <laughs> for real like what kind of pencils is he using to to get like these perfect shades of gray you i know think he I, mean? I don't know maybe it's like digitally flatted probably I, I would think so but like you could tell where some of it's like like pencil shading and, and not so yeah yeah oh or i guess like there's some pages that don't have any of the gray but uh, you still, don't have like, this because it's for issue 11 but look at how insane this is oh man that's sick yeah pretty cool so yeah that, did you have anything more in your in your trade i nah. have like more pencils for other parts but yeah i just had a bunch of uh pencils for number two yeah but yeah Very sick cool. shit good ass trade Good ass trade. They know I rate this a, a gotta have it, but but two of them. Two gotta have it. Two, two gotta have it. Because you got the the hardcover and it's technically two trades. Yeah, it's basically two <laughs> trades, and I would read this shit a hundred percent. And uh, it's got all the good stuff on there. What I guess it? we maybe could have done like the whole hardcover to get the whole gore story. Nah, but that's this is this is just our such whole a podcast. Good ass trade. The whole point is to like get people interested and then like have them move forward from that you know what i mean i guess or if you've read this before it's just fun to hear people talk about it you know yeah definitely um so but yeah this is two two gotta have zits dunked into a starbucks trenta <laughs> <laughs> that's how much i love this it's it's all the all the highest ratings you can get because it's just like it's the best yeah and it, this, this is uh this is a caniac combo so the slaw, extra toast, oh, extra yeah. sauce. Oh, really treat yourself. Then on the way home, go to Cold Stone, <laughs> get a gotta have it. You get the, you get whatever your heart desires. That signature creation. Right now, I'd probably go for like one of those uh, chocolate, chocolate brownie ones or whatever. For sure. Yeah. I'd definitely hit the spot after, you know, some canes. Mm-hmm. And then I just like die. I don't know. <laughs> like food coma. Like die of happiness. Yeah. Yeah. And then just have like this baby. So good ass book. I definitely, yeah, recommend this. I, I don't recommend this enough, actually. Like as a story, it's like it's it's the best. I think anybody could get into it and you know enjoy it unless you don't like gods or whatever. But uh, I, I, this yeah, is like one of the better ones. It, and you really like nailed it with suggesting it to people who like fantasy stuff because it really falls in line with that. And yeah, then, it's got that and everything's just operating at 100%. And then just super uh mythology like based Mm -hmm. and so yeah super sick very good and it's good like throughout the whole run so yeah i imagine let's get into the pull list daniel colon shove it in your box yep yep the pull list the pull list what did you shove in your box big week big week Spent sixty dollars today. Oh my! Oh yeah, you had to. You didn't I didn't go, go last, last week. week so that bit me on the ass. <laughs> that that makes sense. I spent like thirty. Picked up Batman one twenty five. The first Chip Zdarsky book. Yep, first Batman and Jorge Jimenez. by Mister Zdarsky. Yeah, that's like if I were to fan cast a Batman comic. Literally, yeah. it's got Chip, who obviously we love, Jorge Jimenez, my comics man crush. Yeah, and Tom Tomo Mori, who's like a, a sick colorist on Batman. Yeah, so. 
Yeah, that shit's cool. I read what that. I w- what I wouldn't fan cast is that price. How much was it? I don't. I didn't even care. Five ninety nine, Nathan. Worth. I'd pay twelve. <laughs> <laughs> like there definitely was like a lot in there. There's like two comics in there. Yeah, I don't know there's if you, like an there's eight like pager a, in the back or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was interesting, but. Um, what else did you get? We'll talk about. I picked up Star later. Hinge number one by Liam Sharp. Oh, right, right, right. I yep. didn't see that. That's his. Uh, that's just. It's all him. It's all. It's only by Liam Sharp. Mm. Like he draw, writes it, draws it, colors it. Cool. So that's a big project from him that I'm excited to read. I picked up Something Is Wrong with Patrick Todd number one by Ed Brisson and Gavin Gu- Gu- Guidry or something like that. Oh, it's yeah. His yeah. new book coming out. Uh, Twig number three, Saga. And then I picked up the first two issues of The Closet because I missed number one. Oh, cool. Yeah. Good, good, good. So I'm excited to read those. Yeah, I got Closet 2, Batman. I got Batman Killing Time number five. Firepower 22. Little Monsters number five. Need to start that. I just thought, I was just like, I'm not going to. How long is that? It's only like. I think it's ongoing. <laughs> oh, shit. I need to make a decision on that. Like, yeah. Like Kid Vampires, that sounds cool. I, I tried like Googling like the cover for Little Monsters for the YouTube and there's like a, a movie that it's like a zombie movie about this like elementary school teacher. It's the girl who's in um, Black Panther. I forget her name, but she's like the love interest. The like like Tatala's sister. No, no, no. Um, the love interest. Oh, the her. love interest. Oh, I don't know. She's also name. in like us. Us. Yeah. Yeah, I so she's in too. it. So she's like very a, cool. It's also got that. It's got Josh Gad in it. <laughs> so so um, <laughs> he's like always kind of sprinkled into some random project. Yeah, so she's like an elementary school teacher who is like taking these kids on like a field trip, and they go to this like gift shop thing, and then like Josh Gad like runs like the place, and a zombie apocalypse hits, and they're just in this gift shop. And it's super good, actually. So, if you, did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it when it came out. It came out in like 2020, I think. It was one of those things, did first you, things that just came to stream. I thought you saw this because you were Googling Little Monsters. No, no, and I've then you're like, I'm going to watch this movie. It's called Little Monsters, and it and so there's like kid zombies in it too. It's That's pretty, fun. It's pretty fun. Uh, I recommend it. What, but, else did, what else did you pick up? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Twig Three and Saga Sixty. Yep, yep. So, what did you read, Nathan? I read a bunch of books, Daniel. So did I, kind of. I read Eight Billion Genies number two this week. Good stuff. Uh, it's great. I I love that book. Is it a lot. better than one? Yeah. Ooh. Because like you see more craziness happening. I think that Kay. the first issue does really well setting up a lot, uh-huh. and the second issue I guess does explain a lot because the the people are like having questions, and they like did a really good job defining like the rules of this universe. Like you could tell that like Charles Soule and Ryan Brown were like talking with each other. Like, how is this going to work? How is this going to work? Why isn't it like this kind of deal? Mm-hmm. So that, that's really interesting to see. Uh, so I like that book a lot. It's only going to be eight issues too, which oh, okay. which I think is cool because because the eight, you know. Yeah, he already got the deal, so you can just cut it off at eight. Yeah, he's like, fuck it. He's like, that was always the plan though. Next, uh, I read Silver Coin number eleven, okay. which came out last week, and that book like still impresses me to who this day. That? Who wrote that one? That one was Mr. Tinian. Ah, okay. And so he was on it again. I think he did one before. Yeah. But like, there's just like truly unique horror concepts in that book. Like things that I would never see, but like you wouldn't see in like a movie, I don't think, you know? Okay. Like there's interesting ideas that are like fun to flesh out in like a one, like a one shot. Short That thing. I don't think would like carry like a whole ass movie Mm -hmm. but i think it works in silver coins like benefit you know because it's just like the whole time i was engaged i was like oh fuck that's disgusting (laughs) and um it was just really good like number 11 is like one of my favorites of like the entire thing so wow yeah i think a good like horror anthology is something uh really useful and also really creative because then you can flesh out a lot of these like little ideas rather than having something that would fill like an hour and a half or whatever yeah so that's cool i read public domain number one i'd already read it because i subscribed to chips substack but yeah i hadn't read it all in one do you know how much is released on substack four four issues yeah and he's working on five right now gotcha yeah i read it too great right uh dude it was like a heartbreaking like masterpiece it really is i was like fucking like tearing up the, like reading it because it was like 
it. Oh, it's, it was amazing. It's clearly for people that understand like the cool things about the comics industry and the incredibly tragic things mm-hmm. about the comic industry and like about IP and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's really cool. It's not for everybody unless you like love comics, you know, like this is a I book so. for people that love just comics as a whole. And so I felt like it was just perfect. Like, it, and I it's think, so good throughout yeah. like the, the, it's like sad in like a, the, the weirdest way, Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. cause it's just like people, like the people aren't that getting should be sad, like aren't, you yeah, know, but exactly. like you still, your heart still breaks for them. I know. And I so, know. It's so bad. I think people who just have like. A decent understanding of like, I don't know what's it called, in, in, in intellectual like intellectual laws, property property yeah like would find it interesting you know because this shit happens all the time yeah and it plays on that argument of like work for hire you know like he yeah. was hired to work on this thing so like he doesn't own it but it sounds it's like, like it was like a like creator own kind of thing you know what I mean but also. No. A- anyway, was, yeah. Not to get like spoilery about but it's, it, but it's also a really fun satire on like comic book movies and stuff because they're like, oh, we're on, we're in the middle, I, of I don't phase think it's, six of the <laughs> PCU or whatever he calls it. So I don't even think it's a satire. It's just a straight up like it just makes fun of it retelling almost. It, yeah, with like some, uh, you know, just fictional names. Yeah. You know? So I love that shit. It also ends really great. I forgot that like last panel yeah. where he's like, I own the IP. I was like, oh fuck, this yeah. is so good. Cause like I, I when whenever when it was getting to the end, I like kind of saw where it was going, mm-hmm. and it like it, I love when you kind of can predict what's gonna happen, and then it just plays out even better than you thought it would. Yeah, and like the the tr- like just like the last panel, and it's how it's, it's like kind of zoomed out in like a really dramatic way, and he's like making this realization. I don't know, it's so good. Yeah, no, it's but, great. But uh, so I'm subscribed annually for it, but if you want to just pay for like one month. You could read all of it. Yeah. Um, it's called the chip nuts tier, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so. What is it like? Uh, seven bucks or something. Do you uh, know? Yeah. I think about seven, five to seven bucks or something like that. Okay. Um, and I guess that makes sense. It's great. So he, he compiles it all together issue by issue in like PDFs too. Okay. I had been reading it like just when they come out. Sure. And it was kind of hard to keep track of things. So it's kind of a weird way to read a book, but I like that they comp- he compiles it together in like a PDF or a yeah. CBZ file. This so. was like one of those rare instances with like me where I, I like, as soon as I was done reading it, like Sarah got home and I like told her about it and explained like everything and kind of, and I think she was kind of new, like how people can kind of get screwed with like movie rights and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And she like, understood what i was saying and like can empathize why i liked it so much yeah and so she doesn't read comics at all so it's like it's just a really interesting the fact that like, she's able to like kind of understand it like is cool it's it must be so like hard to make something like that so interesting you know i don't think so but like you could tell like that i mean I've, I've heard him talk about it and like he's no, like i like wanted no to one... make my own thing and he's like people tell you to write what you know and he's like the only thing i know is comics so like he kind of just made a story about comics yeah and you could tell like how much love and sort of hate for the industry there is at the same time so it's really unique yeah i'm sure it's not no i want to get him back like on perfect. and i just want to talk to him about it <laughs> Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll get him on it, for like Devil's Reign when that has a trade come out or something. Cause or like the public domain trade. I, that, I would love to have. Yeah, absolutely. Just like in general. He, he's, he's he's a little bit out of our, uh, out of our range now. He's a Batman, he's a Batman writer. writer. Yeah, what the Speaking fuck? Speaking of Batman, Nathan, you, uh, you read it today? Batman Fortress, number two. I read that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Good stuff. Yeah. his uh, That cover for that looked very Derek Robertson for some reason. <laughs> a um, lot of the art is. The plane just reminded me of like Tech Knight. I'm like, yeah, this looks like Tech Knight. <laughs> you can tell that there's like the boys influence in there almost or like just like some of that style kind of bleeds over because sometimes like people smile. and I'm like, that's Billy Butcher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So but it's really fun seeing him like draw Aquaman and stuff. Oh, spoilers, um, dude. Well, like the whole Justice- I, haven't, I haven't read Fortress 2. So just like the Justice League is in the book. That's like part of the pitch. No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Batman 125. Yeah, this is cool. I was like. Uh, I'm like, I know he's going to do well. He's good. He's a great writer. And I was like, it's I, don't, a great I don't know what happened in 124. You know, I don't, I didn't care. I was going to pick it up until yeah. he started. And does a pretty it, good job. It seems like a up. pretty clean cut. And they talk about anything you need to know, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I, when I thought it was being predictable, it wasn't predictable, I, which yep. is cool. 
And then we get like an eight page Catwoman story in the back that connects to it. Yeah. So it's actually kind of interesting. I guess the things that I miss and maybe would like to know what happened there is the marriage between like Batman and Catwoman or like, is that, is that Canon? It's like part of Tom King's run. Did you finish Batcat? No, that would probably explain it. It probably will. So, uh, I don't know. Um, but like, cause it, it, yeah. it, 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 it's pretty clear that it happens in Bat Cat 12. Yeah. Cause the like cover, you know, but I think that, I don't think you should need to read that, I guess, but it's not a big deal. It, the the it's, big deal, it's Daniel, is explain that they're, that they're, it's not, they're not married. The big deal is Daniel, that there's a sexy Bruce Wayne shirtless. Good. By Jorge Jimenez. And I'm like, this guy's the best. Oh so, man, he's incredible. Yeah. And, and there's also a Catwoman, but I care more Cat about Bruce Wayne. Catwoman doesn't have many clothes on, but wow. <laughs> but man, Thomas or Bruce Wayne. I, I yes, sir. I read that and I thought back to my question when we had him on, where I was talking to him um, about shirtless guys and um, the white the white trees, the book that he did with Chris Anka. Yeah. And I'm like, does Chris Anka draw the best shirtless man? And I wonder if that answer has changed for him. <laughs> I, I want to know, know his top three. Dude, White Trees was like... It's very erotic well, it's like somehow. all shirtless men. So it's yeah, like... True, true. It's hard to compete. This I'll, is just like one I need, of, one page, you know? I need to know his top three then. Because Jorge's got to be in there and maybe like um, this guy on Daredevil. I'm spacing on his name. Marco Cicchetto. Mm-hmm. He's, he's good too. Anyway. Yeah. I, like the Robin... I mean, spoilers, I guess, for 125. When Robin gets like shot in the neck, I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, did he just die or something? Like, no, a while ago, he died in like Detective. He when... did, but he got teleported away, and people thought that he got obliterated. Ah, uh. so um, yeah, like seeing that happen, and then it like harkens back to like Jason Todd. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is pretty cool. And then Penguin unalives himself to frame fra- to frame Batman, and I'm like, that's just the ultimate petty thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then it there's like the. <laughs> reveal at the end of like some robot character named the, the executor is that what it was oh, oh um, wasn't it called like contingency or I something i don't know what that guy what thing that thing was called. i don't think i don't understand anything. what that whole bit was about yeah but i'm interested in learning more so pretty cool pretty cool As also i like leave you doing i liked seeing <laughs> when bruce wayne went to like that gala and he like puts on like a half Batman suit because he's like, oh fuck, I need to turn into Batman right now. So he puts on the cowl and he just puts on like the utility belt. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this is Batman, I guess. He's like, I'm Batman. Not anyone else? <laughs> yeah. And he, like, what's interesting is that you could see his eyes through that. So I guess like the eyes are a different part that he puts on because like he just had the cowl and you could see his like eyes and like the whites of his eyes and his pupils. So in a different part of the book, <laughs> did he have the white eyes? Yeah. Uh, so I I wonder maybe it's like his if they like thought about that at all, but it's it's like kind of cool. Maybe it's time. like his uh, business casual like cowl. Business casual cowl, yeah. yeah. I like that. And then yeah, so there's a the Catwoman story at the end, where I don't know an underground gangster dude has like a lawyer, and he's got there's like trying to figure out Penguin's will, and we find out that Penguin has like ten kids. Yeah. I wonder what they look like, because uh, it's pretty clear they went. Kind of more Danny Probably DeVito birdie. penguin, yeah, very close. Which I to thought that. was cool, um, but yeah, that's that's just interesting in general. So mm-hmm. very good. I'm excited, man. I haven't picked up a main Batman book since Tom King, or actually, I picked up James James Tinian's for like a little bit, and then I was like, it's not for me. Yeah, so I'm excited to pick up Batman again. When was King off of it? Like eighty eight or something? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I read Saga sixty. Cool. Which is like the end of that trade. Heard is very sad, kind of. Yeah, kind of sad. Cool. Love that. Uh, Love feeling feelings. That was the cheapest book that I had in my stack. Like I, I was it's going, like I was like adding right? all. Uh, yeah, it was. Like, it's two two ninety nine. I was like adding everything up, and then I I get to the bottom where Saga is, and I'm like two ninety nine. Thank God. Once again, that's the best marketing, I think. Yeah, it's it's so interesting how that book has found an audience. And I, I listened to a podcast that Brian K. Vaughn was just recently on on the Sketched podcast. Oh, cool! And he talks a lot about like the things he does because he loves comics, and like he talks about that two ninety nine price a lot in like the hiatus with Saga. And there's like a lot of interesting background. And he also has like a newsletter slash website where you can like read comics and that dude just like loves comics and he's like the best at doing them so it's really cool to see it was called sketched sketched yeah s-k-t-c-h-d i don't think there's any vowels 
I, I can send you a link, but that's okay. a good podcast. He has like a lot of people on. Um, so I only listen to like the ones of people I know, but he's great. Uh huh. Cool. What else did you read? That was it. Nice. Nice. Watch anything new? Play um, anything new? Started watching One Punch Man again. I got oh, through like nice. half of the first season when it was like first coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, but now me and Sophia are just watching it because we needed like a short show. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just need a short show. Yeah, that's pretty short. It goes by like really fast. Yeah. Uh, so, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Um, what about you? So I finished that show, The Bear, that I was telling you about. Yeah, Actually, I've, saw, I've seen more on it and I recognize the marketing for it. So I might watch yeah, it pretty soon. There's like a thing that happened at the end that just really caught me off guard. Um, it's not like a spoiler, really. But so we finished it and it's good stuff. Like it rounds out really well and it kind of feels like a one season kind of thing. But I guess who's, if they wanted more. Who's that actor? Where have I seen him before? He looks so familiar. Um, who's Mr. The Bear? That is um, the dude from Shameless. That's like literally the only thing he's been in. Really? I f- it seems like he'd be more, but I guess you're Perhaps, right. Perhaps like maybe something that I forgot that he was in or something. Okay. Anyway. So the whole thing, he's he's taken over this restaurant that his brother left him in as well, right? And they just keep talking about the brother like every episode. Uh, his name is like Mike, I think. Okay. And so the last panel of the last episode, he's like reading this uh, will or not, not, like, not a will, but like a letter to him. That just kind of makes everything uh, nice about their relationship or whatever. And so they show the brother, which they haven't done the whole season. And it's just fucking um, John Bernthal. I'm like, they just threw John Bernthal in here? <laughs> like well, he's, for in like the, he's in ha- like the trailers and stuff. John Bernthal is? Yeah. I saw him in like some of the marketing. <laughs> oh, dude. No, I haven't seen anything. And so it's like we're talking about this guy. I'm like, oh, yeah, Mike, he's dead now. And that sucks. And then they just show him at the very end. I'm like, is that fucking John Bernthal? <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to explain to Sarah like who that was, but like she's not seen like anything that I've Al seen. Al Capone from Night at the Museum? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I should have brought that up. She's probably like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that guy's great. And so, yeah, that was just like such a, uh, a left turn for me. That's so, so funny. It, yeah, it was super weird. Uh, and then we also started the show that came out last year, I think. It's called Clickbait. Have you heard of that? I think I have heard of that. On Netflix? Yeah. So it's this like dude. He's got like a family and all. And he like goes missing. And there's this like video that's going viral of him with like signs, right? It says like, I abuse women. And another sign says, when this video gets to 5 million views, I will die. And he's like obviously like being held hostage. And he's been like, like, I don't know kicked around sure and um being forced to film this thing and so it like keeps like building up popularity and gets like closer and closer yeah that's great content yeah i know (laughs) (laughs) and then like fucking news outlets are reporting on it i'm like don't report on this thing that where it says don't watch this yeah or else someone will die it was just like so dumb but Um, like that would happen yeah absolutely because news outlets need a quick buck yeah i know and yeah if it's it's a it's like eight episodes, I think, like an hour in each, and it's like this Sounds huge good. thriller thing. No, it's awesome. My mom, our mom, like recommended it when it came out. Oh, your mom did? Yeah, my mom. Okay, not your mom, my no, mom. Your mom. Uh, no, your mom recommended Sophia it. Sophia does that all the time. It's like I guess Peruvian. She's Peruvian. Like do that all the time. Like uh-huh. her sisters would say like, my mom, or uh-huh. like when we. She keeps saying like my house or like my apartment where we live when she's talking to me. Uh, I'm like, oh, your apartment. <laughs> it's really funny. But why, anyway, why don't you going. go back to your house? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but oh, I read After School, by the way. Oh, cool. What would you think? It's so weird. Isn't it weird? I, I did <laughs> that's not why expect I like, it. That's why I didn't like recommend it to you. I'm just like, hey, you should read this. There's like clearly good like comic book pacing and storytelling in there. Yeah. So it was like a lot of fun. I just didn't understand like what was happening like the third act of that. Yeah. And uh but it was really fun just like seeing her get confidence in this dog. Mm-hmm. And then she like goes downstairs and the dog's like fucking smoking a cigarette and she's like, Oh fuck. <laughs> he's like, like about, he's about to like make food. Yeah, yeah, that was like my favorite page. I, like, was, I was like, This is like what is this? I'm like, this is a good comic as soon as I saw that. <laughs> yeah. And uh And it's just like a one shot and you'll never see those characters again. Yeah. Is, is that fun? And I like the silly they had like a silly Doberman dog or something, like a tall dog. Like, oh, I thought that was like a Great Dane or something. I think yeah, it was Great Dane. You're right. But I just like they did good with like doggy expressions. 
Mm-hmm. So I don't know. That, yeah, it was a, it was all around fun time. It just got weird at the end, which is not a bad thing. But uh, yeah, fun ass book. So that's like an anthology series, I guess. Cool. Yeah, and it'll be like a different creative team too. I'll have to pick that up. Yeah. Um, when when Drew recommends things, I normally listen. I guess. Yeah. He also never recommends things, so this is the first time. Like I gotta gotta give it a shot. That was the first thing. He recommended to you? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Because I like, have a lot of faith in it then. Because like that's kind of weird. Like that book is kind of weird. Because he, yeah, I mean, he like goes through. You have to know that people. Like a ton. Like I don't think he reads everything that comes through his store. Mm-hmm. So he probably like narrows it down to just a few things. And then when he actually reads something that's new, he's probably pretty stoked on it. Yeah, probably. You know how sometimes you read things and sometimes just like the mood that you're in, it like makes the comic hit different. Yeah, dude, I read when I'm getting tattooed, and I'm like, I fucking hate this book. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like Preacher or something. That's like a good book, but yeah. I'm just like in pain when I'm reading. I remember I, like, I read that that Spider-Man one-shot by Chip when I was just like alone one day. Oh, no. Worst time to read it. Like For whatever reason, I was just like alone at, the, at my place, and I was just reading a bunch of comics, and just being alone, and then like reading that, I definitely cried, for sure. But yeah, yeah. yeah. It was probably like a similar thing. Not him like crying, but like he was just in a mood for something like that. And I could see how that would hit pretty different. When we were rereading Saga and I was like reading like the big ass nut crusher compendium <laughs> uh, next to Sarah, like the more emotional parts, I had to just like suck it up. Be like, it's fine. It's, it's not funny. even sad, you know, <laughs> I'm macho. And so, yeah, I, I could see mean. that. Yeah. That's why I like reading up here because I can be alone with my emotions. Yeah, that's great. Um, but yeah, should we get into the shows, Nathan? I didn't watch Ms. Marvel. I was pretty busy today, so... Okay, cool. Well, That's for me to it. edit. Sounds good. Did you watch The Boys, though? I sure did. God uh, damn it. God damn it. What this an episode. So, so good. You know what my favorite part was? Hmm. When, uh... This is The Boys episode 7, by the way. Episode 7, correct. When, uh, Soldier Boys with the, uh, mature ladies. Oh, yeah. And he's like... <laughs> These girls age like fine wine. <laughs> I, he's got such a good like, Captain like, America voice. Because <laughs> I, I watched, I turned that on and that's like the first scene, right? And like Tucker, my roommate, is like in the room. <laughs> Sarah's in the room. I like turn it down. Like, and, yeah. and I'm like, this show is so fucked up. And like, what was he trying to do? Is he like, he's I guess like he was already off. hard, but he, Maybe he's, needed, he just needed a lube. Perhaps. I, guess. I yeah. don't know. That was, uh, yeah, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. It, because like to him... He hasn't aged, you know? Yeah, so uh, you'd think like... You'd think he'd still be getting with people that were like, I don't know, 30, 40s or whatever. That, whatever that looks whatever. that age, yeah. Well, Jensen Ackles, he's like 45. He looks great. He's, he looks fantastic. He looks 26. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I liked... So, what's the what's the mind dude's name? Mindstorm. Mindstorm. His name's I was Dan. Like, I was like, <laughs> Mega Mind? <laughs> no, yeah. When, um, when Soldier Boy like pins him, he's like... Hey Dan, I'm like that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so that. his his chest blast at Hero Gasm like got rid of some people's powers. Mm. I don't know if it like hit them and then no powers or whatever, but I think if it hits them and they don't immediately incinerate, it just takes away powers. Okay, I think gotcha. that's the idea. So they go after uh, Mindstorm, and Mindstorm like he's like in a cabin in the middle of the woods. Very and paranoid. I guess if you make eye contact with him it just puts you in like a, a mental trance. like trap prison th- kind of thing i think that's a conscious thing that he does i don't think that just like happens he's not like medusa you know okay i think he like has the power to do that effect on people and that's just what he defaults to right, right, right. okay um but yeah that was kind of cool we saw like uh what's his name lenny kenny Something like that. Lenny? Lenny? His like little brother. So Butcher's little brother. Yeah, that was interesting seeing more of that and more context like around his dad. Because we yeah. didn't really see a whole lot of that before. Why we don't like him. Yeah. And he's just makes a, a lot of sense. That was a lot of it was cool. It was cool to see like um a I'm not good with words today. A vulnerable side of Butcher. You know yeah. what I mean? And like seeing him kind of become his dad in a way. Yeah. Which is probably like what he doesn't want, but he just like can't really help it kind of deal. The, I have like, I'm going to kind of jump to the end, but there's like, we see all of that happen and we see like during the show, like shots of Lenny cuts to shots of like Huey kind of deal and how he kind of like associates those two together. Mm-hmm. At some point when uh, Starlight's getting compound B for Kamiko, she finds out that 
temp temp v will kill you or give you like a brain aneurysm after three to five doses she tells that to butcher and butcher just like doesn't tell that to huey after all that which seems yeah wrong because he's like or like incorrect like like, even, like, like, like yeah like that why sh- have all that like supposed character growth and then he just doesn't tell nothing. huey and he wants to do more of you with him like it seems weird because it was very clear that butcher wants to protect huey that's a very easy thing to just like tell him to prevent him from getting hurt. And yeah. He just like doesn't. So, I mean, I'm not judging too hard until I see like the next episode. Cause it'll probably explain why that is, but it just seems off to me to have all of that explanation and then not do anything about it. You know, what would be cool is like, this is the point, like say maybe next episode, they all get permanent V could be cut. Like the, show or the book you know yeah um could be so going back to the uh mindstorm thing so they're like looking around for him mm-hmm. and there's like this like nun and priest like yeah. broken down dude that was and so then, fun <laughs> the soldier boy immediately shoots the priest in the head yeah. he's like they're they're bra- they're brainwashed this, like, is by mindstorm mindstorm. Thing. this is what he does yeah <laughs> and then, then uh, he was like i don't think so and then the fucking nun just jumps on him trying to kill him he's like ah oh, shoot her shoot her <laughs> <laughs> that was like such a funny scene. It was pretty like relieving just that Soldier was just right about something. You yeah, know? it's not like him being completely crazy all the time, even though he's like hearing things or whatever. Uh, that was that was I liked how they did that because yeah. he, he knows Mindstorm <laughs> and it's not him being crazy. Mm-hmm. And he's like, fuck you. I'm not crazy. Yeah. And so they catch up to him and I guess he spills the beans on something. I think maybe just saying that Vought gave the green light on it. It wasn't like the Russians. Oh, like the thing that we didn't hear? Uh, yeah. That was so, him telling Soldier Boy that Homelander is from Soldier Boy. Right. right. We'll get to that. Okay. All right. Now, let's get into it now. That's that's crazy. That's insane. I thought it was like... Well, he seemed like he was... Sorry, that was my chair. Okay. It seemed like he was piecing that together, and then he came to that conclusion at the end of the show or something. Maybe. I, I just... I wouldn't have pieced that together because he was so focused on how Vought killed him and he's like why would they do that kind it's, of deal no it seemed it was like the russians why the, like why? captured him but it's it not like, like they were in Vought. cahoots it, where it, within with Vought. you know it was did, did you, you know that did you see the the black noir cartoon part which was awesome by right the way? but soldier boy doesn't know that soldier boy doesn't know that like it was Vought's plan to get rid of soldier boy and they use the russians to become a part of that we know that but did he know that he does not know that right right so i thought it was that whole scene with dan was him just saying that Vought greenlit his capture mm-hmm. and then Payback just had to go along with it. And so that's why I thought he got mad and then smashed his head. I think he got mad after finding out about Homelander being his son too. I don't think he pieced it together. Because he was talking about how he like jerked off into a cup at a hotel once and then, yeah, whatever. But yeah, I speaking guess, on that. I guess so. So. Which, that was such a sick reveal, by the way. Oh yeah, insane. Yeah. I like wanted to flip my table. I was like, oh, oh no. So, uh, Soldier Boy, I, I guess Homelander's, he said he was like the upgrade, right? And so Homelander can also like fly, right? Uh huh. So I'm thinking like, yeah, he was a test tube baby, but I you need like a an egg in order to do that, I'm pretty sure. So who do you think, who else lives really long and can fly who could provide that egg stormfront stormfront yeah that could be the what case if stormfront was homelander's mom accidentally accidental incest and he was just fucking his mom but, but i think see, that's something that the boys might do you know i wouldn't I mean? put it past them <laughs> but stormfront would have to not know that's possible or i think she, she might doesn't be a sick know woman too no, I think she doesn't know because she seems really happy that they let like Homelander. She seemed like she found somebody to like be, I guess, the Aryan sort of. Well, uh, Soldier Boy didn't know up to this point, so why? Yeah, why Stormfront would, probably wouldn't why know. Why would Stormfront know? But yeah, I think you could be onto something there for sure. So that I think that could be really fucking funny. Yeah, that would be really <laughs> funny. And he's just like, ooh, she like jerked me off this season. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because that could be like something. Because she was in this season, you know yeah. what I mean? So that kind of makes it all kind of fresh, you know? Yeah, it does. And so equally as gross. There's a really funny part that Huey was saying. Or no, not Huey. Frenchie. He was like in the uh, 
like apartment and mm's like telling him to like stop doing drugs and he's like the lord hates quitters yeah i know <laughs> that, that was pretty good that that should be a, a shirt mm-hmm. so um kimiko wants her powers back and starlight, starlight helps. gets it, the v to her she they cut she like cuts off like the whole relationship thing with frenchie which like i was actually kind of warming up to but now that they cut it off, I'm like, it seemed like they do it, did it well. You know what I mean? I liked their relationship, I think. I think the way that they did it, I would, I was like warmed up pretty immediately because it okay. seemed like there was a lot leading up to their relationship. Because right. like in the first season, he like tries kissing her after... No, he like kisses her after her brother dies. After Kamiko's brother dies or something. Mm-hmm. And it was like the worst time. And then Kamiko kisses him. And yeah. it was like, he fucked that up. But it was like bad timing as well because he got captured. And so I'm like... It would be kind of nice if they have a relationship after all these things happen to them, trying to keep them apart. Sure. But, um, I guess it's fine if they are just chill with one another, I guess, too. But I saw a really interesting thread on, like, someone asked on Twitter and, like, Eric Kripke, the showrunner, mm-hmm. like, answered it. And someone asked, like, why is Starlight okay with Kamiko getting Compound V rather than Huey getting Compound V? Seems like a bit of a double standard kind of deal. And he answered with, like, with Kamiko, it's about protecting her family, and with Huey, it's about trying to, like, protect, I guess, himself. Yeah. Kind of deal. So, like, Kamiko knows about it and wants to do it despite... And has lived with it, you know? Yeah, and has lived with it and all that stuff. And she didn't want it at one point. Yeah, and and Huey's kind of doing it just kind of for, like, a like a confidence boost kind of deal. Yeah, so, no. For the that, wrong reasons. That so. makes sense. That does make sense. I didn't think about... How there were two different compound B situations there, but yeah, I thought that was cool. I thought it was funny that they had Kirkland whiskey, like a that was pretty funny Costco quantity <laughs> of whiskey. And she's like, "Oh, Kirkland, nice." <laughs> and I also really another liked, another uh, uh, product placement thing. Yeah, and I like how when she was leaving the Seven Building, like Homelander there is there and like confronts her and says all this shit, and she was like live streaming the whole thing. Yeah, I, like that's like something that that was so I smart. would think they should have been doing like in every scene with Homelander. True, but then they finally do it. You know, well, like she was being paid by this like Vought and like the Seven at that point. Yeah, and th- at this point she doesn't care. But I like how quickly he changes. Like he throws on like the 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 public mask. Mm-hmm. That was pretty fun. But yeah, good show. So just a couple more things. So A Train's alive. Oh yeah, that was weird. And then they got, and he has Blue Hawk's heart. That's in so him. fucked, dude. That's so fucking funny. It's like, like, I guess it's fine. Like he he wasn't gonna use his heart anymore, but just like symbolically, so fucked. They do shit like that in like Grey's Anatomy, like all the time. It's so messed up. Where like there's like a school shooter or something that ended up dying, but has like perfectly fine organs that can save the people that he shot, kind of yeah. thing. And so, like, if you take the emotion out of it, it's like normal. But yeah, like, yeah. Symbolically, it's that's fucked. Just say it's anonymous. I like, wish, I don't wish that A Train died, but it seemed like that was a good point for him to die. Yeah, because I don't think he had that big of like an impact on the show. Like at this point, I guess yeah, because I, he wasn't running. I'm just curious what his plans are. Maybe he'll wise up or something and help. I guess it would have to be something like that. Yeah, like I'm curious what they they're... didn't do it for nothing, just yeah. to keep him there. They, they have a plan with him, and I'm interested to see what that turns into. But yeah, the Blue Hawk thing was—he's like, "What? What are you talking about? I wonder who found him because they were pretty in the middle yeah. of nowhere." So, and then like you were saying, uh, Noir was hiding at like a Chuck E. Cheese or something. Yeah, and uh, I love Noir this episode. There is the animated anthropomorphic memories that he was having, which was super fun. Yeah. They did that really well. And so I guess Soldier Boy did all that shit to Noir's face when we thought it was like war or something. Yeah, it was, we thought is, it was like that explosion, but it was like, yeah, him using like his shield and shit, which is so fucked. Super fucked. And I like how um, like his animal, Black Noir's animal was like a black sheep. Yeah, I thought that so was he's cool. black sheep Noir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's hilarious. Um, but yeah, good show. Like it, one more coming out in the next couple of days or when yep. this is out it'll be out i like it so far better than season two uh yeah this has been great yeah it's been awesome so hopefully uh good ass ending yeah i wonder if soldier boy is gonna be in this season or just this season or if they're know. just gonna keep dragging out the homelander being an issue thing maybe i thought homelander was gonna die probably like this issue a perfect ending would be, would be like homelander dies I guess that it's kind of hard to see that now, but 
and then Soldier Boy ends up being like the new issue. Yeah, that could be. Like for next season. Yeah. I just like how the situation changed so dramatic like dramatically in like five seconds with the, the sun reveal, because it's like, oh no. Like we had like a fight fire with fire kind of situation, but now it's just like created this whole forest fire of like just bad now there's two homelanders you gotta fight kind of right. deal. Right. So that'll hey. be interesting. But yeah. yeah, love the show. Love it. What are we gonna read next week? Nathan, what are we gonna read next week? We are gonna read Powers. We sure are. By the, Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Avon Oming. Yeah, the Who Killed Retro Girl. And we're gonna watch the PlayStation show. We're gonna watch it all. We're gonna watch it all, all two seasons. Nathan's coming over. We're gonna binge it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all twenty hours of footage or whatever on the PlayStation Network. Yep, yep. No, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> I don't even have a PlayStation, but I got the yeah. DVDs. It's That'll okay. be next week. So that's the show. That's the show. Thanks for watching, listening. If you're listening, go watch. If you're watching, thank S- you. Keep watching. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> watch it again. Um, all give us a shit. like if you're watching. If you're not watching, go watch and give us a like. And subscribe. And subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. <sighs> Turn on the bell notifications. We have a link tree to find all of our things, but you can all email of our us. in there. You can email us at tradewaderspot at gmail.com to give us some recommendations. Yep. We got a lot lined up, but when we don't have a lot lined up, I have no idea what we're going to do. We so love us, having more. Give us some recommendations. Yep. Um, we got Twitters and stuff. That's all going to be on link tree. Just check that out, I guess. All right. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>